The 2024 Phoenix Rising season is presented by Equality Health. And match day four is upon us, and we have a Southwest showdown here at 38th in Washington as the defending champions Phoenix Rising FC coming in off their first victory last week, host New Mexico United in tonight's matchup presented by Equality Health. You're watching the USL Championship and welcome into the Valley. Killian McClatchy and my partner Joe Lowry here on a breezy night in Phoenix as we've got two clubs who don't like each other very much getting ready to go in this early season battle. Yeah, these clubs, Killian, do not like each other one bit. One of the best rivalries in the USL Championship and a tightly contested one. Five wins for Phoenix, four wins for New Mexico, two draws across all competitions. Rising looking to build off of last weekend's 1-0 win. Speaking of that 1-0 win, our players to watch, it's these two. Panos Armanakis and Juan Carlos Azacar, the two who combined on the goal, which we're going to show you right now. It was a great buildup. It really was. Panos Armanakis scored Phoenix's first goal of 2024. He's a playmaker, but also a scorer. You can see him crash at the back post. Panos had three goals for Phoenix last season. This year, already on the scoreboard, well on pace to surpass that mark. And then Juan Carlos Azocar, someone who can create had his first start at left wing back last season. Skillful on the dribble, even playing on the side of his non-dominant right foot. Look, you can see this guy is right-footed, so creative, so incisive on the left side of defense. Yeah, Azocar, a touch of class last week to weave his way through the defense. That one just getting a good shot opportunity in that 1-0 victory for Phoenix Rising. Those are the two players to watch tonight for the host. The visitors for New Mexico United. It's the midfielder, the Italian, Marco Micheletto. He's been absolutely fantastic for Eric Quill's team so far this season. His first season, Killian, in the second division of American soccer. He's been a standout in the third tier, was with Columbus Crew 2, the Capybaras, and MLS Next Pro. He's been involved in both of New Mexico United's goals so far this season. Smooth on the ball will drop deep as a playmaker. Big part of that team. The fans are ready. The wind is gusting here in Phoenix. We got lineups and kickoff coming up next from Phoenix. There's satisfaction in sacrifice. In spilling blood. Sweat. And tears. In knowing that you left it all on the floor. And never threw in the towel. Well, except to clean up the mess. Giving it all for your team is worth every drop. Medela, proof for fans with a fighting spirit. Huh. How long have you been tracking our car's value with Carvana? Just like seven months. Should we sell it? We hold. Hold. Silver vans are going for more right now. Should we? Hold. Our low mileage is paying off. You think we should? Hold. Depreciation's really heating up. You think? Hold. Hold. We just did 2.5%. Hold. Now. I'm on it. I'm on it. Already sold to Carvana. Go to Carvana and track your car's value today. Your health shouldn't depend on where you live, which language you speak, or the size of your paycheck. Everyone deserves access to high quality care for a healthy life. At Equality Health, we partner with primary care providers to break down barriers to care and build healthy communities. Better health for all, the real game winning goal. Equality Health is the season presenting sponsor of the Phoenix Rising and proud sponsor of the Rising Community Soccer Clinics. Tonight's broadcast of Phoenix Rising FC is presented by Equality Health, by Carvana, and by Northern Arizona University. Welcome back in. Match day four, Phoenix Rising FC and New Mexico United. The lights are off, the wind is blowing. 
here in Phoenix, Killian McClatchy, Joe Lowry, and Joe, we're going to give you the starting lineups first for New Mexico United. Five starters into the lineup, five new starters out of Eric Quill's team after their 4-0 away loss to Charleston Battery. Marco Micheletto in midfield is the player to watch, the deep line playmaker for Eric Quill's side. And the 11 for the host wearing the black kits for the first time tonight. Unchanged, Killian, from Danny Stone tonight. It's worth watching how the wingbacks continue to progress the ball out wide in Juan Carlos Azucar and Edgardo Rito. At 1-0, the clean sheet for Rocco Rios Novo, the man between the sticks tonight for the hosts, as we said. We've got tonight's availability report brought to you in part by Spooner, the only man out, Alejandro Fuenmayor, still not ready, coming off of that off-season surgery. Do have John Stenberg available tonight, though, off of the bench, should they need him. Yeah, it's great to get the captain back, at least in the game day roster. The back three has been so strong for Rising so far this season that there's not a real need to rush him back into the 11, but good to get him back on the bench. Well, we're underway, New Mexico United in the all yellow. Tonight coming in at one, one and one, four points, fresh off of a defeat last week at Charleston. A 4 nil defeat. They drop out shot 18 to 7, 10 to 2 on goal against the defending Eastern Conference champions. It was a rough evening for New Mexico United away to Charleston. They've had a really difficult schedule to start the season as we see them progressing forward into the final third. Now already trying to press forward. And it's out the back as Rocco Rios Novo will get to touch the ball for the first time this evening. Tonight is a chance, though, Killian, for Eric Quill's team to get back to their winning ways. This is a New Mexico United team that is still trying to find themselves. You get a look at the weather, 30 mile per hour, per hour gust tonight. We're seeing flags blow around the field. We're seeing everything blow around the field in, in pregame warm-ups. We had balls rolling left and right. This is a New Mexico team that's still trying to find who they are under Eric Quill, who's still trying to find in some ways who he is as a manager. Came into New Mexico in the middle of last season, changed some things. You'll see them pressing high up the field at times. You'll see them try to build from the back out of a 4-2-3-1. That's the look they've gone for throughout the season so far. Yeah, ball played through the midfield. Good little opportunity for Phoenix early on in the first moments of this match. As pass a little too far out. We're going to see, I'm going to give you a Lowry's low down. Match day number four. Yeah, key for rising tonight, keep the balance out wide. Killing in the first couple of games of the season, we saw one specific pattern over and over and over again. It was Pano Sarmanakis in the right half space unleashing Edgardo Rito down that right side. The, the tweak really for last weekend's win against Oakland Roots was getting Juan Carlos Azucar more involved. As the starter for the first time this season, his ability to influence the game with that right foot was unmatched in that game against Oakland. For New Mexico, it's smart midfield pressure. I mentioned Eric Quill is still instilling his tactical beliefs into this team. It's a lot of man-to-man -man pressure for New Mexico United through the midfield. They're going to have to be careful with how aggressive they are in the early going. Around. Already seeing here in the early moments just how big of a factor this wind is going to be. You can see it both in the goal, the, the, the flags in the corner mm. as well. And for these players, Phoenix going with the wind to their back to start. What is that going to do to kind of affect this match, at least through the first 45? It further incentivizes Killian teams to play with the ball on the ground. In, in a lot of games, especially against teams that like to sit deep and hoof the ball long, you can really imagine the wind being a huge factor, and it still will be a factor tonight. But both of these teams would rather play the ball on the ground than through the air. We certainly see that with Phoenix Rising. Yes, there is a cry to be a little more direct in how they attack through possession this season. But really, it is still a lot of careful combination play, patient buildup from the back. New Mexico United are liking generally to do a lot of the same stuff. They want to play with the ball on the ground. They want to build through Micheletto at the base of midfield. They want to have Zico Bailey get on the ball and drop deep at times, push forward at other times. Both teams generally want to keep the ball on the ground which is a good sign for a game tonight that will inevitably be impacted by the wind in one way or another. Novo puts one into the air. Back three so far for Phoenix Rising. Been so good this season. As Rito, nice little back heel touch, but turned over now sent all the way over to Asso Carr, who loses the handle on it. Astorga up the right side. Sends one through to the middle. Greg Hurst getting on the ball there. Former Phoenix Rising striker Greg Hurst. 
somebody who needs a little bit more help in New Mexico's attack. He's been the starting number nine this year. We've seen Eric Quill go through a few different winger combinations. We're not seeing Jacobo Reyes in the starting 11 and that number 10 spot tonight. Instead, it's Nicky Hernandez, someone that Eric Quill knows from his time back in the FC Dallas system with North Texas SC in, in USL League One. We're seeing New Mexico chop and change a little bit. They still don't know exactly what their best 11 is. And Hurst, as a result, he's gotten on the score sheet this season, but still needs a little more help in New Mexico's attacking structure. Playing it back quickly. Pop our boy. And Mo Treore. Two of those members of that back line that have been so solid with Lawrence Wyke as well on that right side. Strong tackle as Jose Andreas Hernandez gets taken down and helped up by his opposite number, Nicky Hernandez. You see Andreas on the turn there. Nicky Hernandez has the ability to impact games physically. He's clean on the ball. He's more of a connector than he is a through ball threader in that number 10 spot. But he certainly has the physical advantage on Jose Andres Hernandez. 5'11", 175, Hernandez in the midfield. Certainly a little bit more than the 5-3 Jose Andreas Hernandez. Oh, no? Rising clearly comfortable getting on the ball in the early stages here. A little bit of the commentator's curse there as Nicoletto intercepts in midfield. Yeah, long run down into the corner for New Mexico. Kind of ringing around. Somewhere with it, low cross sent in, right footed shot sent high to far above the top post. As mentioned, these are two clubs. They see each other often, don't necessarily like each other all that well. They saw three times last year that in a series that New Mexico took two out of three, including a 2-1 win in the U.S. Open Cup. Yeah, this is one of the better rivalries in the entire USL Championship down here in the Southwest. Two teams that have fan bases that frankly don't like each other one bit. You can see some of the rivalry, some of the rivalry carry over from year to year. This is a game, and rising head coach Danny Stone talked about it in the buildup in some of his media availabilities. This is a game that, that rising know there's going to be a little more edge to. They're comfortable with that. They're ready for that. Even willing to add some of that edge tonight. But also a game that they don't want to over, be overawed by, and we've seen rising so far this season not get overawed, certainly at home. Our boy puts one through to the midfield. Chested down, but laid off. White getting involved. Like high up the pitch. Lays it off. Now swung, looking for Asso Karin behind, but one that just sails on everybody. We saw that ball from the right half space out to Juan Carlos Asso Car for the goal sequence last weekend against Oakland Roots. We'll see it again a number of times this season as so we get a look at Eric Quill, 46-year-old manager for New Mexico United, came in in the middle of last season, hired in June of last year. He's just the third coach in New Mexico United's history, took over for Zach Prince, who left last year to go join Troy Lassane's staff for the New York Red Bulls. Troy Lassane, of course, the first ever manager for New Mexico United, an organization that's developing a nice track record, as is Phoenix Rising, for moving coaches on to the next level. Killian, this is a trend we're seeing across the second tier. Now in American soccer, we think of Juan Guerra going from Phoenix Rising now to the Houston Dynamos coaching staff under Ben Olsen. We're starting to see more and more MLS clubs look to the USL Championship for coaches, for assistants, for eventually future number ones on various staffs. It's an encouraging trend. Nils Novo plays that one, being pestered some and able to get the ball off of his feet. Then falls down to Gallardo. Gallardo brings it across midfield. In towards the middle, nice little move there. Back for Gallardo. Gallardo, right-footed shot, Tambakis. Leaps up, but not cleared fully away. Armanakis taken down right at the edge of the box and then out of touch. An early opportunity for Phoenix. It's a great bit of buildup from Phoenix Rising. Of course, it ends in the shot from Erickson Gallardo. A nice clean save from Tambakis there to parry the ball away. But it all starts with clever play from Rocco Rios Novo in the back to find Jose Andres Hernandez. Clean buildup from Rising. That's one of the major reasons why Rocco Rios Novo is in goal. And a reminder, fans, I want to welcome you to the 2024 USL kickoff presented by Terminix throughout the month of March. We also will be kicking off across the country. Join us for all the action on ESPN and the CBS Sports platforms.
there's room for a bit more rhythm in possession, Killian, from Rising so far. Some nice sequences, of course, we just had the one about a minute ago, where they're building from the back, drawing New Mexico United's press a little higher so they can then play in behind, or at least in front of the back line, create some of those gaps in midfield. There's room for a bit more of that. The tempo's been okay in the first nine minutes or so of this game, but room for, for a little more speed in how they build from the back. Such as at the back as Maples with the ball at his feet. Lays it back to his keeper, Tambakis. And from Athens, Greece. Big touch now. Trying to get the touch. To Kale. Formella. Places one all the way across the pitch. Trying to get it now onto the right foot. So trying to cross it as another one that went tuck looks like. Did take a deflection. We'll have our first Carvana corner kick of the night. It's a little out of sync there on the right side, but one of the things I like is getting Lawrence Wyke involved in the attack. The outside center backs, you don't see a lot of teams be quite so aggressive in pushing their outside center backs high up the field. We saw Lawrence Wyke do it a number of times last weekend against Oakland. He's somebody who is comfortable getting forward and adding one extra number to potentially pull apart the opposing defense on that side. There is Carvana corner kick. Swing this one, tucking back in towards goal. And Tambak has just got a fingertip on it. And I guess that's the one opportunity when you got the win like this. Why not just go for goal? Panos Ramanakis already has that wicked left foot. A little bit of help maybe from the wind, bending this towards the back post. Nearly an Olympico. Well done to Tambakis to get up and, and parry that one out of bounds. That's a dangerous one, getting that touch on. He almost even deflected it into the net himself. Yeah. Yeah. You want to put goalkeepers in impossible situations on set pieces. Amanakis nearly does just that on that set piece. Gallardo from the other side, another one bending in. High header, and that one will go over the top of everything. In set pieces tonight, Killian, you're talking about the impact of the wind. Set pieces undoubtedly will be the area that we will see the wind impact play the most. Already sort of semi-scripted, semi-unpredictable moments of play. Adding in the wind this complete, you know, a foreign element does change the dynamics of those sequences. Hurst was looking for it as a touchdown for Mella. For Mella to Armanakis. He's got Rito off to his right. Tried to feed one through to Formella, and it did sneak its way. And it will be another corner. It's a great ball from Panos Armanakis to feed his number nine, running in behind. Darius Formella is a player who can do a lot of different things. He's still working on becoming the singular focal point in the attack for Phoenix Rising. It's a nice slipped run. Just can't quite get that shot off cleanly. Carvana corner kick. Carvana will drive you happy. Armanakis again. The man to take this one on the far side. To try and do a similar thing. That one a low driven cross. It's headed up and away. It was Maples. He got his way to it. He's a Phoenix rising player down. Is trying to start the counter now. New Mexico United. Long run, pop our boy, and he's right there. And still, and now we will have a whistle. We'll see the collision again here at Killian. Aquila Akale colliding with Erickson Gallardo there. Gallardo now down on the ground. Starting to make his way up, and a yellow for Derish Formello, who's not happy. I'm assuming simply about the fact the play continued on while Gallardo was still down on the pitch. And while that play continued on, we got a quick look at one of one of the things that has defined the early stages of 2024 for Phoenix Rising. That is their transition defending. The back three for Danny Stone has been absolutely fantastic this year. They've allowed very, very little in terms of opposing chances. They've been sharp defending in space as well. We saw Mo Traore getting involved in the press earlier on tonight. This is a group of center backs, not just the starters tonight, Killian, but also John Stenberg sitting on the bench. J.P. Skears, someone who we've seen play in that position this year. Think about Ale Funmayor, who is still, of course, on that availability report. 
that is the singular strength of this team right now. It is the it is the biggest strength of this team. Their ability to absorb pressure, their ability to go out there and influence the game in space as well. The center backs have been very, very strong. And we talked about it some last week for those of you who did join us for that 1-0 victory is, is official that yellow for Formella. But if you're Danny Stone, you've got to be absolutely thrilled with the way that your back line has looked so far. I and mean, it's one of these things as you're getting a Stenberg back, you'll get Flenmeyer back soon. There's going to be hard decisions to make. And honestly, there's not really a bad decision no, to be made. No, and, and those are the choices. Those are the difficult choices that you want to be put in positions to make. As a manager, those are the kinds of moments that you dream of. You know, do I start this potentially all USL championship center back or, or this other one, right? Potmar Boy has been a smash hit in the middle of the back line for Phoenix Rising tonight to the point where it's, it's making conversations about, you know, where do you put John Stenberg when he is back and, and actually fully ready to go? Where do you put him on the field? Do you put him at the left-sided center back spot? This is your captain. You can't afford to keep him on the bench forever. But also, if you're Danny Stone, there is just no obvious place to put him in the 11 right now. Fouls Gallardo back out of the pitch. See him back up and going. As Rito tried to sneak around, good defense. There by Gloucester. It's Chris Gloucester. Back up Montclair, New Jersey. Now getting a little bit of space. Great move over there by Akale. I laid off into the midfield. And this is where New Mexico United need a little bit more, and they need Marco Micheletto to get on the ball and have a chance to play forward. Number 10 there in the middle of your screen. Italian, played some soccer over in England. Now, of course, in the United States, played for South Georgia, Tormenta. Played in MLS Next Pro with Columbus Crew 2. There is Micheletto with a shot, and Rios Novo parries that one away. As Armanakis now inter intercepted. Back over, trying to get the right foot. Low cross in, back post! And it's 1-0 New Mexico. It's Deion Harris opens the scoring for the visitors. It's one it's one of the lone sequence of sequences of sustained possession in the final third that New Mexico United have had tonight. That's some of the danger that Mikwele Akale can provide. Shifty on that right foot, dangerous on the right wing. A nice slipped ball across goal for Harris and a good finish to put New Mexico United up 1-0. Good cross, and it just kind of looked like the entire defense for Phoenix just a little lost. It's hard when you get such clean, crisp passing inside the 18. It's hard to react. It's hard to stay engaged inside your own box. It's great play from New Mexico United. I talked earlier about Phoenix maybe putting Alex Tembakis in impossible situations. Well, New Mexico do something very, very similar. There are defensive laps from Phoenix Rising. Kali with the assist, and Dayon Harris... The Canadian opens the scoring, and it's 1-0. 15-plus minutes into the match now. And we talked about it earlier, Killian. New Mexico needing to find ways to score and to create chances outside of Marco Micheletto. They're sort of box-to-box, -box, occasionally deep-lying playmaker, occasionally a player that embodies the number he's wearing, that number 10 pushing higher up the field. Well, we haven't seen it a whole lot this season, but we saw it there tonight from the two wingers. That's got to be music to Eric Quill's ears. Harris now with more space and tries to send a cross in, looking for Hurst. Couldn't get it through as Phoenix played back through Gallardo. And these are opportunities, Killian, for Ryzen to go and break forward quickly in transition. They don't quite get into the attacking half of the first couple of passes there. But as New Mexico will go forward, there's going to be more and more space for Ryzen to break into in behind. White on the ball. Sends it up for Armanakis, who's pestered by Harris. Rito, quick little touch back, Armanakis. Sent back through, Formella right-footed shot. Kicked up, still not out. Played back through. Touchdown, nice little move, but good help defense. Come to the backside from New Mexico, now trying to spring another counter. Slide and taken down, Traore. No whistle, they're going to continue playing, and a miscommunication between Gallardo and Azokar. And Traore is still down. It looks like he is in a lot of pain. How good is this, though, from Mo Traore? Stepping in to stop that counterattack, get in and win the ball off of Akale. 
getting the ball into the foot of Juan Carlos. You hate to see Mo Traore still down. So Akale pleading his case with the official, and now they're trying to get the medical staff out to go and take a look at Traore. As he's made it to his feet now. Assuming he's fit to keep playing, Killian, this is one of the greatest strengths that we're seeing from Mo Traore so far in this young 2024 season. Last year, locks down the starting job as the year progresses. Still not all that comfortable defensively. Still trying to figure out his moments to step, trying to figure out his moments to drop as that left-sided center back, someone who played left back in LAFC system. Traore this year has looked sharper. His defensive instincts have looked more well-drilled. He's been more comfortable on the left side of the back line. He has looked very, very sharp, reading those quick defensive moments where you have to make quick decisions. It's a good bit of play from Mo Traore at left center back. Traore looking to try and walk it off. A little limp there, going to try and stretch it out, though. Right, Traore and Akbar Boy, backline mates from Senegal. Reminder, nice match brought to you in part by Modelo. Award for those with a fighting spirit. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. Down 1-0, Killian. This is a chance for Pano Samanakis to continue to influence this game. We've seen him get on the ball in set pieces. We'll see something similar here. We've seen him get on the ball in open play as well and feed Darius Formella, breaking him behind the back line. When you're trailing, you look to your biggest playmaker. You look to your biggest star. That is Pano Samanakis. He's delivered for this team once already. is fully capable of doing it again and again this year. We'll see what kind of set piece he delivers into the box. Kids whipping at the back of all the players standing right on the edge of the 18. Armanakis readies. Official making sure. This one, low swinger, popped up, still not out of the box. Now a little bounce, and you see where they say it will be a goal kick. And actually, now a late change, it will be a corner. And you don't mind Phoenix's chances on set pieces. A lot of trees in the lineup. Potmar Boy, Lawrence Wyke, Mo Traore, not the strongest physically, but someone who can get in there as well and, and crash a little bit. We see the service. Lawrence Wyke not able to get in the ball. Can't keep it in play from Potmar Boy. But some good bodies to aim for in the box from Gallardo and from Panos. Our boy had a goal taken off the board last week. This one swung towards the back post, and that one just sailed on everybody off the right boot of Gallardo. It really has been a lot of Phoenix rising in the final third. Killing, I said it earlier, New Mexico's goal comes off of one of the only sustained sequences of possession that they've had, not just in the final third, but really in the attacking half. The challenge for Phoenix now is as the game continues to progress, as you get closer to halftime, New Mexico have less and less of an incentive to go out and venture forward. Eric Quill wants this team to attack. He wants them to try and play with the ball. So we will still see New Mexico take risks. You're not comfortable on the road up just 1-0 against Phoenix Rising. But every minute that goes by, we're going to see that back four for New Mexico United drop a step, drop a couple of steps. Even less space for Phoenix Rising in the attack. You see Tim Backus throwing his hands up in the air as he can't get the ball to stay put. Looks like Darius Formell is tossing out a few tips for Tim Backus. They're all having a conversation. Seems like Tim Max is the one. He's kind of saying, hey, everybody pay attention to me over here. We watched this in warm-ups, and it was, it was baffling to watch. Just you had all these, you know, all these balls just scattered out there on the pitch, and you'd look up, and it's just they were on the pitch one second, and then they were gone. That's the second ball killing we've almost seen flow into that stand. They're on the east side. Not an easy hand that Timbakas has been dealt in those goal kicks. Oh, and headed down, flag up though. Or offside. Well, and, and you think in some ways it would be an advantage to Rising with Timbakas struggling to even get the ball into the center circle or anywhere near it. It is in some ways, but in other ways it's very much not. Right? You can see the frustration on, on Formella's face. You can see it in Gallardo's body language there. 
Rising want the ball to be in play. They need the ball to be in play so that they can continue to build some momentum, gain rhythm, have some of those clean, crisp passing sequences that they want to have under Danny Stone. But the longer the ball is sailing you know, out of bounds at a 45 degree angle, the less time that Rising is actually going to have to build their possession play. Touchdown, Akale. Ball at his feet. Nice little one, two. Astorga making his way up the right side. It's going to be Hernandez. Hernandez feed through Hurst. Back for Astorga. Cuts off to his left. Akale, another cross in. Defended back out of the box. Akala has been bright tonight. He hasn't been exceptionally sharp in the first few games of the season. He's made two starts. He started the opener against Pittsburgh and then the game at Rhode Island in Rhode Island's first ever match in the USL Championship. Tonight we're seeing him much quicker on the ball in the final third. Kale from Minneapolis in USL League One a year ago. Had a really good season. 11 goals and five assists. Already picking up the one tonight. Long shot, diving save by Rios Novo. What a save that is from Rocco Rios Novo. One of the best goalkeepers in the USL Championship last year. Came up huge in the USL Championship final. Good extension to his left. Great goalkeepers make good save look routine. Harris was looking for an early first half brace. Carvana corner kick. This is the first one for New Mexico is you know, Akale having a hard time trying to keep this thing. We mentioned the gusts, 35, potentially up to even 40 miles an hour at some points tonight. As number select is the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more select the player's choice. Juan Carlos Azucar does a lot of good stuff pushing forward from left wing back. Though tonight at times we're seeing him get maybe a little United counterattack in that space exactly where Akali is trying to get to right now. A little nice play. Hurst trying to get to it. Left footed shot. Nice sliding tackle attempt from what you'd have to imagine, one of the early season Rookie of the Year candidates in Potmar Boy. Yeah, Potmar Boy doesn't lose a lot of those 50-50 battles. Stays in strong against Greg Hurst. Gets the ball out of play. Potmar Boy really has been so strong this year, Killian. One year at college, played for Clemson, made it all the way to the College Cup, was a rock in the back for Clemson. Now it's been the exact same at the professional level for Phoenix Rising. His mobility, his strength, his timing, Defensively, all have been excellent start 2024. He's the de defensive MVP in that College Cup run for Clemson. He's trying to chip that one through, but goes nowhere and rolls out the back. I really am fascinated to, to see more of where Juan Carlos Azocar, just his second start on the year as a veteran of this league, to see where he positions himself. How high is he going to be? What happens when the ball turns over? New Mexico United clearly targeting that space just to the outside of Mo Traore on the sort of the, the right side of your screen there. In behind Juan Carlos Azocar, they're looking for that gap and have had some success countering into that space tonight. Ball down to the feet of Micheletto, who gets taken down from behind by Gallardo, who thought he got the ball first. And that's what Marco Micheletto is so, so good at getting his body between the ball and the opponent, smooth on the ball, press resistant, not a guy that loses possession in bad spots very often. He is the, the faucet, really, for this New Mexico United team. Everything flows through him. Gloucester. He's up top. Here's the goal scorer, Harris. Harris has looked good with the ball at his feet tonight as well. There's Astorga. Played back one touch, trying to get it through to Harris. Harris laid off one more extra pass and a little low driven shot into the waiting arms of Rios Novo. And even there, you could see for Akali to have the space to shoot. Azokar is about five yards higher up field. Also pinched in. This looks like a deliberate tactical choice from Danny Stone to push Azokar into more dangerous and more meaningful attacking areas. 
The only challenge is Rising haven't really been able to take advantage of this quality on the ball. So you're not gaining anything from that choice so far. It's been a lot of loss on the defensive end. Zambrano. Pop our boy. Just throws this one in deep. It'll be a little bit of a foot race. Tambakis comes out and he just has to clear it and puts it about 10 rows deep into the stands. Fans on that east side getting real familiar with the ball tonight, Killian. Yeah, getting a lot of action on the throw ins from that side. It looks like we'll be going to a bit of a hydration break. And a reminder that this hydration break is brought to you in part by Phoenix Union. The hydration break, the two clubs come off, get a few moments. Catch their breath. Pop our boy, Otreore. Getting a chance to get some food and drink. And we showed you at the top of the broadcast the goal scored from last week. First goal of the year for Phoenix Rising. And Joe, it was something we talked about. The buildup was just fantastic. Yeah, and here's that outside of the football from Panos Ramanakis over to the left side. We've seen one of those passes on the right half space over to the left wing already tonight. And then it is so clean. It's so sharp in the final third. Not just from Azokar, not just from Panos crashing at the back post, but also from Darius Formella. In the lineup again tonight after the club goes out to sign Remy Cabral from Colorado Rapids to an MLS Next Pro, a guy who was tied for the golden boot in Next Pro last season. Formello, though, has largely retained his starting spot. He's only been on the bench to start one of Rising's four games so far this season. And one of the main reasons for that killing is how clean he is in possession. He's a guy who can drop deep, who can turn, play a teammate in behind. Rising now between Azokar, between Gallardo, between Rito. And when you think about what really becomes a flat front five in possession with Formella and Panos rounding out that front five, three of those guys love to streak in behind. And Formella is a great player to help those players get on the end of service. Certainly is, and remember, when it comes to a sports injury, the unknown can be unsettling. There's one thing that can calm the uncertainty, and that's an answer. Mayo Clinic uncovers answers every day through exploration, teamwork, and innovation. Answers that can lead to more answers and define a path forward. So if you're looking for answers related to a sports injury, you know where to go. Learn more at sportsmedicine.mayoclinic.org. So out of the hydration break, Phoenix with a throw in over on that far side a little bit too far Hernandez taken to the ground but ends up keeping possession but not for long little passes now Hurst plays that one forward our boy heads down though it's great work from Phoenix Rising's back through you can see as pushed up high which is fine that's exactly where Danny Stone wants him but it does put strain on the back three to be able to shift over from side to side and sweep up some of those attempted long balls from New Mexico. Armanakis, good tackle. Coming in from behind, Nicky Hernandez. Hurst with the ball at his feet. A little through ball ahead, but come on out. We'll see. What they say is Wyke trying to make the argument that it wasn't him who touched it. And to his dismay, it will be a throw in for the visitors. Sharp play from Greg Hurst in between the lines. Somebody can do a lot of different things. Rising fans know well in that number nine spot. He can slash in behind. That's how he scores his first goal of the season. He can also drop in a little bit, get on the ball, thread a teammate in behind. We saw it just, just a moment ago. Tossed in. Long roll as Marboy has it now. Nifty play, just launching it up into the air. It was Agarto Rito. We haven't seen Rito really unleashed in the final third so far tonight. That was a theme of the first couple of games of the season. Last weekend against Oakland in that one no win, it was a lot more of Juan Carlos Azucar on the left side. But Rito, with that speed, it, 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 even something as simple as being on the same side as Panos Armanakis, the team's best through ball threader, that really unlocked Rito in the first couple of matches. We just haven't seen quite enough from him so far through the first 33 minutes tonight. Formella got tripped up from behind there. It's Talon Maples, defender from Andrew, Texas. This near side. Gallardo tries to lay ahead to Azokar. Azokar 
Slide tackle now taken down right at the edge of the box and cleared away. There's Okar to kick a little high on that ankle. That's nifty play down the left side for Phoenix Rising from Gallardo from Azokar. A player that's, a pairing, excuse me, that's still trying to gain their chemistry together. Still trying to feel each other out. We'll see different moments where Gallardo stays wide as a car tucks in a little bit inside into the half space. We'll see moments where they're rotating a nice bit of combination play. And offside and trying to get place for the ball sorted out. 34 minutes played. Here in Phoenix, a 1-0 lead for New Mexico United thanks to the 15th minute goal from Deion Harris. Just outside. Six is that one. Passed. It's been a long time up in the air. Plenty of hang time if you got your stopwatch at home for some of these tonight. Rising having to deal with some of those quirky long balls that are coming into the wind from Alex Tembakis. They've done a good job. We saw Mo Traore there holding his ground, waiting until the last second to go and push forward to make a play on that ball. That is savvy defending from Rising's back three so far this evening. So we're coming up about 10 minutes plus anything added on at the end of this first half. But you have to wonder if you're Phoenix, do you start to press a little bit more knowing that you've got the wind at your back and you're going to have to fight it like New Mexico has been in the second half? It's not really been the press part of Phoenix's DNA. This one gone over. Akale over to his right foot, deflected down. Nicely done. And rolls all the way out. It hasn't Killian been a huge part of the high press of Rising's DNA through you know, three and a third matches so far of this season. But you don't hate the look. Right? You don't hate Gallardo and, and Panos Armakis and Formella trying to creep up the field a little bit more to disrupt some of New Mexico's buildup. A foot in there, Hurst turning. Hurst with space near post, Rios Novo. An absolute rocket off the boot of Hurst. And he calmly sat it down. And now Phoenix trying to get going on the counter. One of the few times killing this season we've seen Potmar Boy lose a bit of ground. Greg Hurst with a great turn to the outside of his right foot. Can't find a corner. Still, Rocco Rios Nova has to make a reaction save. That's great work from Rising's number one. A calm save yeah. there from the Argentinian. Zico Bailey. It's up a booking. Here, another yellow. This is a New Mexico United team. They'd come in for these first three matches. They're tied second in the USL Championship with 11 yellow cards in the early portion of the season. And Zico Bailey in particular, if Micheletto is the playmaker who sort of drives this team as they push forward, it is Zico Bailey, someone who's played in a number of different spots throughout his young career. He's the one who does a lot of the defensive dirty work. Not the most physically imposing guy, but can cover ground, is very, very quick. Traore, a bit of a bad turnover as Hurst has the ball at his feet. Just to wait off, and Zambrano intercepted that pass and likes to play it all the way back. I don't mind that back pass, Killian, from Renzo Zambrano. Gives Rising a chance to get their foot on the ball, a chance to build a little bit and to try to pull New Mexico's midfield out. I talked about it earlier in Lowry's lowdown. Mexico like to defend man-to-man -man at times through midfield. You see Zico Bailey stepping to deal with Zambrano there on the left side of your screen. They're not afraid to push those central midfielders forward with Micheletto, with Hernandez, with Bailey, that then can create space for Phoenix Rising to attack through the lines and find their half-space guys who can then turn, receive on the half-turn, and play forward. Our boy, San Andreas Hernandez. Long ball, tried to thread one through. Bit of a heavy touch. Touchdown, left-footed cross, trying to look for the back post as Tambakis just leans back and watches that one go through. And fans, we got a new era of the USL kicking off here in April. Join us Saturday, April 6th on CBS as Louisville City FC takes on Indy 11 at 4 p.m. Eastern at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, kicking off the first ever national broadcast of the USL on the CBS networks. Back 
Marcus. And just to keep that one in play. His previous view that he'd sent that direction and ended up in the stands. It's not easy tonight with the wind killing. Not easy for New Mexico United to keep the ball in play off of some of those long goal kicks. One of the things we continue to see, though, is the longer the ball sits for Tambakis, the harder it is for Phoenix Rising to get back into rhythm. We've had a number of these little short stoppages, the referee trying to control the game. Phoenix hasn't had real sustained success in the final third. They've had possession. Yes, they've got the edge 52% so far tonight. But they're being outshot. Rising just with three shots, none of them real clear-cut chances. New Mexico United have been the more incisive side in the final third. Our boy, Gallardo. Great ball. In the middle, the sex to lay it back to Zambrano. Now Wyke helping out in the attack. It's good, Killing, to see the center backs get on the ball and push a little bit higher. When you're not getting quite that level of incision, of creativity from your more forward players, why not push one more number forward, try to destabilize the opposing block? Mella had his back to goal, had it taken away from him. Now starting to see more black kits pressing forward. Wyke, nice job recovering after losing the first step. Rano, Jose Andreas Hernandez. Back to Wyke. Complimented Mo Traore stepping forward into midfield to win the ball. Lawrence Wyke, such a sharp defender on that right side. Here's Azokar. Get to that right foot. Right footed shot just above the crossbar. A little bit of a frustration effort. <laughs> you won't get to keep that one. A little bit of a frustration effort from Juan Carlos Azokar. Cutting inside onto his dominant right foot. Again, a right-footed player on the left side. Playing as that left wing back for Danny Stone. Rising haven't had a lot of clear-cut looks. You don't really begrudge Azokar for wanting to have a crack. Still, you'd like to see a little bit more patience in the final third. And then that quick change of pace, that quick little bit of speed to have the finishing touch. back to your regularly scheduled programming next to the Valley Wind. Heads up the, play. Yeah, I was going to say, we're getting a lot of good, pretty good throw-ins here in this first half. The fans on that far side. This Phoenix crowd knows ball. Killian. No doubt. Taking a moment for Mella. This is possession now being headed around. Armanakis and out the back. Formella's had a hard time tonight really influencing the game. We saw that goal sequence during the break. Formella at his best really when he can drop two yards in front of the opposing center back, get on the ball, turn, play forward, then make an accent run into the box. We've seen Formella either be the guy leading the line, which is fine. He can do that stuff. He can score goals. He will be a double-digit goal scorer for Phoenix Rising this season. But he's at his best when he can get on the ball in a little bit of space and make the players around him better. Credit to New Mexico United. Credit to Taylor Maples as that left-sided center back. He's been very sharp tracking Formella even a couple of yards as he drops between the lines. Not a lot of joy for Phoenix Rising striker tonight. Maples, one of many former MLS super draft picks. He was selected back in 2021 by Seattle. Chose not to sign. Going the route up in the Houston Dynamo system. Played the last couple seasons for Dynamo 2 in MLS Next Pro. Played with that man, Nicky Hernandez, the two dynamic duo at SMU during their collegiate days. Both with Texas ties, Eric Quill, a Texas guy, coach in the youth soccer scene there, was involved in FC Dallas's system helped create and help build the careers of some U.S. men's national team players. You think about Ricardo Pepe, Chris Richards, both guys that crossed paths with Eric Quill down in Dallas. There are obviously some Texas representatives in this New Mexico squad as well. Sailed above the head of Hurst as we're back underway. Trying to lay it back right through. Hurst just got a touch to it and deflected. An excellent job. Looked like Traore who came out of nowhere. It was another dangerous opportunity. Greg Hurst has been a thorn in the side of Phoenix Rising tonight. Quick touches in the box. He's been aware with his off-ball movement. You see him slide in to continue that sequence. Traore slides over at just the right moment. Yeah, Traore doesn't get over there. 
You've got Hurst and Akali that are right next to each other with nobody in front of Rocco Rios Novo. Carvana corner kick. The far end. Don't be surprised, Killing, if this ball ends up closer to the near post. All right, you should be surprised. Well, I'd be, I'd be shocked if it's close to the near post after that. You're quick. You know that? I try to be. White walks it up. If you're Danny Stone, you'd love to see one more composed, quick, sharp bit of possession play before the halftime whistle. We haven't seen nearly enough of that from Rising. Great through ball there from Hernandez. Here's Arbanakis. He's got Rito. Rito, low cross, deflected up, and Tampakis. He's going to drop on top of that one. And sure it ends up in the arms of Alex Tambakis. He's going to waste a little bit of time here, understandably so, before the halftime whistle blows. Still, that is much more purposeful from Rising. I talked about not unleashing Edgardo Rito on that right side. Rito, against any team in the USL Championship, will be one of the quickest players in terms of straight line speed on the field. Good to get him involved, get him on the ball in a crossing position. Great chance for him to play in an outswinging ball from that right wing. Scott Ward have five minutes of stoppage time. Conclusion of this first half. Yos Novo well out from goal. Try and press this one high. Astor get a little bit of an awkward deflection off the header. That's good defensive work from Gallardo. You lose the play, but force the opposition back, force them wide. Good energy from the left winger. Hernandez, Rocale. Rocale, number one of the, this is a very sharp on ball tonight as Micheletto. Back to Akale. Laid up, but twisting in the wind. Hurst comes out of nowhere. Hurst trying to get the best. Pop my boy, but good recovery. Chested down in the middle by Hernandez. You wouldn't hate to see a little more of a coordinated press from Phoenix Rising in the second half. They have the quality individual defenders from the middle of the back line to go and deal with a lot of what New Mexico United can throw in over the top. You have the ability with those three in the back to be a little more aggressive, especially chasing the game. Because it feels, Killian, to me, like this first half has really lacked energy from Phoenix Rising. Yeah. A little too static, not quite sharp enough, not enough tempo in possession. And I think you can apply a lot of those things to their work out of possession. You see Formella you know, waving to his team, trying to help them push forward. We haven't seen nearly enough of that. New Mexico United, a team that can play through pressure, yes. But are they all the way there yet with their attacking scheme? No. It's so early in the season for all of these more possession-heavy sides. There are opportunities to go out there and disrupt some of the play, especially in the back from New Mexico United. Zico Bailey on the ball right there in the center circle. Number 19, not somebody who is super comfortable on the ball under pressure. Why not try to push Zambrano and Jose Andres Hernandez higher up the field so they can have their, really their chest right on his back to discourage him to actually be able to turn and play forward. And you just kind of get the feeling through this first 45. Phoenix as a whole just hasn't really felt just unsettled, I think is the best way to put it. Not really comfortable at all in this match. And you gotta give some credit to New Mexico United for how they've handled this first 45. Absolutely, and that's where I was gonna take it next, Killian. They've been really, really sharp in quick transition moments, looking for Akale as he tries to break in behind. Good speed, great ability to cut inside. Continues to be a thorn for Phoenix. As a car, the nicer the ball at his feet and looked like as he made that turn, an arm came up and caught Akale up high. Yeah, not super intentional there to go for the face. But if you're Juan Carlos Azucar, and you don't need your arm up that high, you don't need to extend that high, you want to get your shoulder, maybe a little bit of the elbow, just into the body of your opponent to create space. No need to go that high. And Kai 
coming off, talking to Azo Carr. And Kale saying, looked like he was kind of rubbing the eye a little bit, might have got poked. If you're in New Mexico United, Killian, through the first 49 minutes of this game, you are extremely happy with how this has gone. Not only have you had you know, real, genuine chances in the final third, you've been the first team this year to sort of consistently make Rising's back three uncomfortable in moments in the final third. But also, Rising haven't really had chances. Yeah, as Traore just has to shield off Akale in a quick throw, trying to get something started. Aggressive slide, and now here comes a, an immediate yellow to the back pocket as Gallardo back down on the pitch for a second time tonight. So clever from Erickson and Gallardo as he rubs sort of that lower leg after a tackle from Nicoletto. He knows he's got that close control. He knows he can cut, on, cut inside onto that preferred right foot. Such sharp play right through the legs of Nicoletto. Nicoletto, our player to watch for New Mexico United tonight, picks up the all the Italian. Gallardo back up and running around. Traore has it back at his feet. Made ahead, Formella try to chip ahead. As well, Carr, if he can win the foot race, but he can't get there. It's Tambakis talking to the official, telling him, check your watch for me, please. If you're Phoenix Rising, if you're Danny Stone heading into halftime, the message is everything needs to be two beats quicker. One fewer touch in every phase of play. A little more aggressive defensively. Step that line of confrontation a little bit higher. Try to get your forward players engaged in the game early and more often in the second 45. That one. I think that one actually well, nearly out of the stadium. And with that, it will be the halftime whistle. I mean, I guess you can't really... You can't really keep playing when you put the ball into the upper deck. Not easily, anyway. And took a little bit longer that way. Well, a 1-0 is the first 45 is down in New Mexico. United looking to try and bounce back from last week's 4-0 defeat. Got on the board first, thanks to Deion Harris in the 15th. We got halftime coming up here from 38th and Washington in Phoenix. It's 1-0 New Mexico United. Don't go anywhere. Not half time, come up next. Life happens every day. From small milestones, it's official, to big victories. With online programs that fit your life. NAU moves at the speed of you, so you won't miss a single moment. Mountain. Get started at nau.edu slash nauonline. Quench your thirst and save big at Circle K, America's Thirst Stop. Soda 12 packs are two for $12 or three for $15. Select 24-pack bottled water cases are two for $7 or three for $9. And don't forget to grab one of our famous Polar Pop cups that stays cold longer, starting at just 99 cents. Only at Circle K, your one-stop shop for all your thirst needs. See store for details. Billy, I need help with a clicker. Yeah, wait one second, Grandma. This guy's going to buy my car. Billy, you still there? Okay, you need Carvana. What's your plate number? Boss, M-O-V. Vehicle features, no accidents, right? No. Good. Generating offer. Carvana can pick it up tomorrow. That's an amazing offer. But do you still need help with the clicker? I'll ask your sister. Sell your car the easy way with Carvana. Well, it's finally happening. The robots, they're coming. Hmm, maybe that's a good thing. She said what? She said what? I was ready like a full 20 minutes before you. What are you talking about? 
<laughs> it drives better than you do, babe. Who does? <laughs> Bye, robot. The game is Call Your Shot. This is a crossbar challenge. Going to the six, the penalty spot, 18, middle of half field, and then half field. Today's contestants are Ryan Flood and all the way from Argentina, Fede Varela. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're here, you're here. Good luck to these guys. Let's see what they have. He does the, he does the flick. Yeah, he's, let's see. He's Back in Phoenix, 1-0 New Mexico United lead over Phoenix Rising. You saw a little call your shot crossbar challenge. Eddie Varela struggled a little bit on that one, but it's okay. We'll give him a pass. It might have been the might have been the win factoring into it. We got more coming up here at halftime on the other side of this break. Go get it done. When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. You've given us a foundation to be proud of. We build on this now. This is it now, gents. This is us from now on. be honest most of us aren't going to be professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals Termites show up? So do we. Terminix it. Phoenix Rising are your reigning national champions. And they're fired up to start the 2024 season. So come witness it. Watch your United Soccer League champs battle Colorado Springs switchbacks. Saturday, April 13th at 7.30. Right here in Central Phoenix off 38th Street in Washington. And only five light rail stops from downtown Phoenix and Tempe. Tickets start at just $15. Go to phxrisingfc.com to buy your tickets now. Kickoff Saturday, April 13th at 7.30. Back in, halftime, Phoenix looking for a goal, just like the youngsters looking for some Easter eggs out there. Honestly, the way the wind's going, if you just stand still, you assume most of them are probably just going to come to them. It's 1-0 here. Some other scores from around the USL. San Antonio with a 2-1 victory over Monterey Bay. Orange County, 1-0 over Tulsa there in the second half there. Las Vegas and Oakland in another Western Conference showdown. 2-0 Las Vegas, that Oakland Roots team trying to right the ship there a little bit, Joe. Yeah, Oakland struggling, of course, out here in the desert last weekend. A new, lit, a new look, Las Vegas Lights team having some success. Yeah, certainly, those are some of the scores from around the USL Championship. And here's some of the news and notes from around the league. As a reminder, we're a week away. First national game on CBS, that Indy 11 at Louisville City FC. And then USL League launched the USL Jägermeister Cup, the inside World Cup style tournament, which is going to be exciting to see. I know Joe's excited for that one. And then a reminder, Phoenix Rising, the next home game here two weeks. It's Saturday, April 13th against Colorado Springs. A reminder, you can get tickets 
at phxrisingfc.com. What a name. The Jägermeister Cup coming to USL League One. I could not be more excited, Killian. That's going to be must watch. I'm telling you, you can't see him in here, but Joe was borderline doing a backflip. It doesn't get any better than this, Killian. The Jägermeister Cup. I love it. He loves it. The kids, the Easter egg hunt, the wind blowing. It's a 1-0 deficit for the hosts and the defending champions so far. A little bit easier to pick the eggs up. We can actually see where they are. I would agree. It's going. Halftime continues on from Phoenix. Wednesday afternoon, heading to Glenelg Downs. That was my elementary school growing up. Take the trophy, talk to the kids a little bit, share a little piece of the success that the team was able to achieve this year. My house was this one right here. This is where it all started. because I remember being in their seat on the other side. People here in Maryville, in my community, it's, it's pretty rare. Like, realize it themselves that like, all right, like he's one of us and like he did it, like I can do it, you know? Jersey signed by the whole team. It's just full circle, honestly. I know this isn't something they see every day. My parents came here to, you know, better my future, better my siblings' future. Like that's the reason why they struggled, why they went through what they went through, so. I always had that in the back of my head. I made a lot of memories. Do what makes you happy and go for it. We mix flavors you never imagined. The result is a smash hit. Two bold flavors in one can. Smirnoff Smash Vodka Soda. From the makers of the world's number one vodka. Tonight's broadcast of Phoenix Rising FC is presented by Equality Health, by Carvana, and by Northern Arizona University. Welcome back. Welcome back in 38th and Washington to the home of the defending USL champions. 1-0, New Mexico United on top. Um, the host, Phoenix Rising FC, Killian McClatchy, Joe Lowry here. Sprinklers on, and again, the wind's still a factor. We've talked about it all throughout that first half. As ready to show you some of these highlights from the first 45 in a match that Phoenix hasn't really looked settled in all that much, and New Mexico really controlled that first 45. Very much so, Killian. Basically, even in terms of possession so far, but Rising being outshot, New Mexico with seven shots so far, Phoenix Rising with just four. Rising really not a huge threat in the final third so far tonight. Well, we're going to give you some of these highlights. The first half highlights brought to you by Desert Ford Dealers. Here's just kind of the, the, the epitomization of the wins. Alex Tambakis, the goalkeeper. Uh, what, what am I supposed to do here? I don't even know. But Phoenix, a couple opportunities early in the match but couldn't really find the back of that. Yeah, some nice early moments from Rising. You get the shot there with the right foot of Erickson Gallardo, but not a lot coming from that. Mikuelia Akale, a real danger for New Mexico United all evening, sliding the ball over to Deion Harris, who finishes first time with that right foot. If you go back through to watch the goal sequence, both wingbacks for Phoenix Rising completely unaccounted for. 
Juan Carlos Azucar and Edgardo Rito, non-factors so far on the defensive end. Yeah, just looking a little lost inside the 18. A couple good shots for New Mexico United. Rocco Rios Novo made some big saves to keep this at a 1-0 deficit. Here are the first half stats. You mentioned seven foreign shots. Possession pretty even for tonight, though. Yeah, 182 total passes for New Mexico, just 180 for Phoenix Rising. But Killian, this is telling. New Mexico with 53 passes in the final third to Phoenix Rising's 37. About 16% more accuracy on those passes in the final third as well. That's going to be a big thing here in this second half as the teams do switch and So it will be Phoenix going into the wind. And New Mexico will be going against it. We talked some in the first half about what advantages and such it posed for each side and also the disadvantages. But we're going to start with the visitors. You got New Mexico United. You're leading 1-0. You're playing with the win. We already talked about in the first half how it was a little bit of an advantage. You see the flag all wrapped up. That's just how crazy it's been and kind of swirling as well throughout the night. But what are they going to be looking for in these next 45 to try and come away with the three points? There's no reason to change much of anything. If you're Eric Quill coming out of your halftime talk, we highlighted Marco Micheletto coming into the match, the deep line playmaker at times, the final third, you know, lock picker in other moments. But really, it's been Mukwele Akale who's been the difference maker on the right wing for New Mexico United. New Mexico want to keep exploiting that space that's left behind when Phoenix Rising push their wing backs forward. Not a lot that really needs to shift in the second 45 for New Mexico. Banditos kind of have been sitting on their hands most of the night, waiting for something to get up and cheer about. What does Phoenix need to do to try and at least get level and then see if they can start to seek the winner? One of the things, Killian, is we've seen on the goal sequence that the wingbacks need to be more engaged in every phase of play. We know these guys can be attacking difference makers. That's what they're brought in to do. Phoenix Rising lose 32 regular season goals in the offseason with Danny Trejo and Manu Arteaga. Both depart the club, Trejo over in Poland, Arteaga now in the Eastern Conference of the USL Championship with the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Lose so many goals, you need your wingbacks to come in and give you more. And Rising specifically targeted Rito and Azokar as players who could bring more in the final third. But you also need some defensive work. We're seeing Mo Traore and Lawrence White hung out to dry too often when Rising are back defending in their own third. And then you need more attacking thrust. You need more accuracy in the final third. You need more tempo in possession. Armanakis awaits the whistle. He was a goal scorer last week for Phoenix Rising, the first goal of the year. As he puts it back, and we're ready to go from 38th and Washington for the second half as the defending champions will seek the equalizer. We're seeing New Mexico start this second 45 minutes, looking comfortable in that 4-4-2 mid block. We're seeing Harris push a little bit further forward. We'll see Micheletto drop a bit deeper at times. It's going to look like a 4-5-1. It will shift, but New Mexico, all they have to do in the second 45 minutes is come out and play their game. The, the pressure is on Phoenix Rising to come out there and break them down. Absolutely not the other way around. You see, you always talk in the match. See, the first five, ten minutes are always so important. It's a long run. Justin poked away in the edge of the 18 in New Mexico. We'll send it deep looking for Hurst. Long run for Traore. He'll get there, get a boot to it. Lay it off to the keeper. The first few minutes, though, Killian, are important to your point. Rising need a little bit more tempo. We saw it there from Juan Carlos Azucar getting forward, driving down the left wing. That helps set the tempo. It helps destabilize New Mexico's defensive block. It draws players out of position, then creates opportunities for a quick switch to the other side. We know Panos Ramanakis can hit that ball. We know that Jose Andres Hernandez and Renzo Zambrano can help facilitate some of that possession play. The ball maybe not moving quickly enough side to side when New Mexico press with their wingers stepping out of shape. Our oh boy. High header knocked in. Gallardo. Left-footed cross low. Looking. Sneaks through. Tambakis lost it. And cleared away. It's a little sketchy moment there for the visitors in their 1-0 lead. Well, and, and you don't hate the idea of sending a few more crosses into the box, especially when the wind has been un as, as unpredictable as it has been tonight. It creates a little bit of uncertainty for New Mexico United inside their own 18. First Carvana corner kick of this second half. Our sponsor of Phoenix Rising, Carvana will drive you happy. Quick touch to Gallardo. 
Now left foot, Armanakis trying to look to the near post. I don't know if it was looking for a cross or attempting a long shot. He's going to have to reset, play it all the way back to Rios Novo. And these are the moments, Killian, for Ryzen to quickly get back into their possession structure. You see Lawrence White getting back into shape. You see Potmar Boy doing the same. Rising have to be quick in these moments because time is ticking in the second 45 minutes for a team that still hasn't created a ton of clear-cut opportunities. I'd like to see Killian in the second 45. Darius Formella get on the ball a little bit more. You can see the space there behind Zico Bailey, number 19 for New Mexico United. You can see that space behind Nicky Hernandez as well. Maybe there's an opportunity there for Formella to drop in and try to link some play in the attacking half. You know, tried to thread one through, gets it right back to his feet. Laid off, but a miscommunication. He thought Armanakis was going to zig when he zagged. And it happens in the final third, right? You fail far more often than you succeed. As you get closer and closer to goal, that's, that's just part of this game. I like the idea of Rito getting on the ball, and I like the idea of that outside of the right foot through ball as well. Nothing comes of it, but those are the kinds of ideas that we know this rising team is capable of, right? We've seen them do it before. We saw it against Oakland. We saw it even in the, in the season opener against Birmingham, where this team does create chances in the final third. It's just that little final piece that's been missing. Say Andreas Hernandez tried to drive one low, but ended up catching the back of a New Mexico player. That one turned over. Asokar turns on his left foot. Nice slide tackle to upend that one. Looks like they're going to say it was out off of Phoenix. Excellently done. We'll get a look at this slide tackle from Astorga coming in on Juan Carlos Azacar. It's a good sign for Danny Stone that we're seeing the wingbacks get more involved in the attack as this rising team pushes forward. It was a huge area of emphasis from Brandon McCarthy, sporting director from the entire front office for Phoenix Rising, to find players in those wingback spots who can be difference makers in the attack. That one, Deion Harris, he scored the first goal. Tried to combine there with Nicky Hernandez. A nice little run in. A look at a second. And to pick up just briefly on that wing back point, we saw Eddie Munjoma, versatile outside back for Phoenix Rising, could play on the right, could play on the left. Traded earlier this week to the Tampa Bay Rowdies over in the Eastern Conference of the USL Championship. Rising very, very comfortable with the players they brought in this offseason. Certainly are. Joe, my guy, started 27 matches a year ago. Now, out of the Eastern Conference. Here's White pressing a little bit higher. Cuts this one back towards midfield. Long run for White, still with the ball at his feet, and now finally going to send it off to the far side of the pitch. And the switch of play is too slow there, but you like the idea. Trying to work the ball from right side to left side. Not exactly how White drew it up in his mind before going on that run with the ball at his feet. But that's more of what Rising needs. They need to shift the ball quickly from one side to the other. When you do that, it forces the opposing defensive block to move with you. And as they move, it's harder and harder for them to move together, which then creates little gaps in the seams that you can exploit with some of those line splitting balls. Knocked back again as White. We'll watch it back to Rios Novo. Possession through the first couple minutes in this first half. Definitely leaning heavily on the side of Phoenix Rising. Here's Rito. Zambrano now back to White. First, watching Popmar Boy as he just has to spin. Send this one towards the middle. Formella gets a boot to it, but turned over. Quick little one two. Nicky Hernandez turns, trying to keep it at his feet. And look at where Juan Carlos Azacar is after the ball is turned over. He's high. He's just off screen now. Up is basically the left winger. Credit to Erickson Gallardo for getting back into shape. But that's been a theme tonight, Killing. We saw it on the goal. Both Juan Carlos Azacar and Edgardo Rito. Not tracking back, Rito creeping up on that right side for Rising Azokar, doing the same thing on the left. They haven't quite been engaged as the ball is turned over tonight, and it's come back to bite him. Armanakis sends one down through the center. Micheletto with the ball at his feet. Beautiful build up right now from New Mexico. Here's Harris, the goal scorer. 
there. A nice slide tackle from White coming in to take that one away. Armanakis can't keep it at his feet. Zico Bailey. Hernandez slips with that one. Looked like he might have been having a shot at goal. A little hard to blame players for taking some of those pot shots tonight when you know the wind is on your side, at least when it comes to doing something unpredictable as the ball nears the opposing goalkeeper. Our boy waits on it. We're seeing Lawrence Wyke, right-sided center back, off your screen right now, the third member of that back three, along with Potmar Boy and Mo Traore. We're seeing him push further and further upfield with Rocco Rios Novo joining that back three, really giving rising full, rising full on 11 players in the outfield. You'd like to see Phoenix work the ball up that right side to take advantage of Wyke pushing forward. Yeah, traditionally, that three-man back line is the foul on Akale Traore. Trying to press up a little bit higher. It's almost really just the two defenders back yeah. there. Yeah, we've seen that at various points tonight. And that's not new for Phoenix Rising. It's not really new for teams that want to possess the ball in a back three shape. They'll push one center back forward. They'll push the other center back forward. You sort of come to expect that. I'm sure Eric Quill expected a bit of that. What's been missing tonight is the rotations there. The execution to take advantage of that rotation hasn't quite been. Opportunity crossed in. Zambrano, though, chested down just inside the box. Now Deion Harris, second shot with the right foot. Trying a little volley. But Rio Snovo was able to dive out to his left and make the save. He's been so good tonight, Rocco Rio Snovo. Let's in that goal in the first half. Very, very difficult situation for any goalkeeper off that one-time strike from Harris. But in every other moment has come up so big for Rising. Not a ton of you know, incredibly difficult saves for him to make so far, but just so solid and then pushing forward to become a number. You'd like to see the ball get off his foot just a little bit quicker. Bit of an errant pass as Harris at his feet once again. It's good pressing from Phoenix rising up against the sideline. Good ball from Panos Armanakis and a touch from Renzo Zambrano. This is where you want to switch the field over to the far side. That's great play from Rising. Here's Gallardo crossed in. Low driven cross. But well, can't get through. It's a whole host of yellow kits now trying to come back on the counter, but pass goes through to nowhere. The energy just so much better on that sequence for Phoenix. And remember, can't watch the match. Be sure to turn on Sirius XM FC 157, North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Plus your live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more. All on Sirius XM FC 157 and the new Sirius XM app. You saw the errant pass from Lawrence Wyke there at Gardarito. Can't keep the ball in play. Now we got a Chris Gloster throw in. Not enough accuracy in possession for Rising so far tonight. The passing accuracy in the final third, just 45.5% compared to New Mexico, 62.1. Here's a Little, all sorts of space. Akale gets it to his left foot, chipped up ahead, and calling for a handball, and it looks like they're going to get it. They're going to come over and argue. It looked like Pop Bar Boy... And now an opportunity for New Mexico to double their advantage. Micheletto on the ball, playing off to his right for Akale. Sizing up the opposition. You see Potmar Boy. His hand is outstretched there, not in a natural body position. See that left arm extend. There's no reason for that arm to be up nearly that high. There's just no argument there for Phoenix Rising. The ref gets it right. That's a penalty. So Rios Novo had a couple big saves early in that first half, and it looks like it's going to be the former Phoenix Rising man, Greg Hurst, native of Scotland, to step up. Scored five goals a year ago. He earned the penalty that beat Phoenix last fall. 
Going to try and convert this one to make it 2-0. First one goal in the season already. Scored the game winner against Pittsburgh on opening night. Hurst. Blocked! What a save by Rocco Rios Novo. Rocco Rios Novo comes up big in penalty moments. Had two saves in the USL Championship final against the Charleston Battery last season to help Phoenix Rising lift the trophy. Comes up big in this moment, shifting to his right. It's a well struck penalty from Greg Hurst, just not quite low enough. Allows Rios Novo to extend to plant to push off to his right. There's it's a great save. As it's sent out, they'll reset to the corner again. Could that be the moment sparks a little bit of life in Phoenix? It's got to be. It's got to be killing. We'd seen some signs of life earlier on in the second half, a couple of good counter-pressing moments, a nice switch of play, and then immediately that chased by a sloppy pass out of bounds and now a penalty given up by Potmar Boy, but a great save from Rocco Rios Novo to keep his team in this one. Zico Bailey, right foot crossed in, looking for the back post, centered back in a high shot way. Too high, and that one sent out of the stadium. Phoenix Rising, living on the edge right now. Have to take a moment, catch their breath, but can't take too long either. Clock's ticking, still not a lot of clear-cut opportunities in the final third. If you're Phoenix Rising right now, though, you feel like you have a new lease on life. Approaching a half hour to play, thanks to that big save on the penalty by Rocco Rios Novo. who's now saved three of 14 penalties in his career so far across time with Atlanta United, time of course in the USL Championship. Those are just in-game penalties, saved two of course in that shootout that I mentioned earlier against Charleston. Looks like lots of changes coming for the hosts. Remy Cabral, one of them, and one a long awaited one, an exciting one. Julia Doratiotto. Hey. The young Italian looks like he's ready to come on. So Armanakis comes off. Timmy Quesho and Fede Varela. The other one's coming on with Giulio Doratiotto making his debut here in Phoenix. There he is donning the number six. The player Phoenix Rising fans should be excited about just 19 years old, coming over from Juventus, was in the youth system there. He was in Turin at Juve since he was 14 years old at 28 appearances with Juventus' U19s. Right-footed, versatile central midfielder, can play a little bit deeper as a six, can step higher as a number eight. Good ball progressor, was physically dominant. But killing the question is, how does he translate that to the professional level? How does he adapt to the speed of play that is undoubtedly higher than even the U19 level over in Italy? Trying to get the ball to Remy Cabral, so big changes for Phoenix. Trying to mix things up, Danny Stone. A little bit of jolt to life after the penalty save. It's understandable from Stone. Cabral, another player worth spotlighting for just a moment. He's much more likely than Formello to slash in behind the back line. He's gonna take advantage of any space that's in behind the back four for Eric Quill. Laid up ahead, Fede Varela. Laid off, now low cross in. Another one, seeing a lot of those on that far side of the pitch. Sent down, Varela down at the end line, but unable to get it through. Varela just waits a beat too long before wrapping his left foot around the ball to play a cutback. Even with all these subs, Killian, not a shape change from Danny Stone. Still in that 3-4-3 in possession, we're gonna see Julio alongside Renzo Zambrano as a double pivot. And, and even now, we're seeing number six on your screen. Giulio Doratiotto press a little bit higher. Emil Cuesho getting engaged inside the box as well. I like the extra intensity from Rising, even as they keep their general structure the same. Fans, be sure to visit your local Arizona Financial Credit Union branch to get your Phoenix Rising debit card. 
It's a great way to support the team and spread the word. Visit ArizonaFinancial.org. As Cabral lays off Rito. Rito trying to center on the edge of the 18. Can't get the pass through. And cleared away. And the changes certainly, we said, maybe it was that little bit of energy they needed. And you're starting to see it now in rising in the way that they're moving the ball. Well, and that's one of the things, Killian, that Emil Cuejo does so well. Doesn't quite have the same on-ball threat as a Panos Ramanakis or even as an Erickson Gallardo, of course, who saw him come up big in the postseason last year. But what he does so well is engage quickly when Phoenix Rising don't have the ball. As soon as the ball turns over, he'll quickly step to a man, go and press and try to win possession back for Rising. As this clock ticks, that defensive energy is only going to be more and more important. This one, looking for a long through ball to the near side. Cabral with the ball at his feet. He'll be out for a throw-in. Cabral getting involved early, just a few minutes into his time on the field in the second half. Another ball sent in. A low cross. Quaisho trying to get involved again, trying to keep the pressure. White. Crossed in, headed right back out. Tortiotto gets a right foot to it. Headed back up. Being knocked around New Mexico. Certainly feeling the pressure, and now a foul. Lorenzo Zambrano, not a big fan of the whistle. You can see the energy, the physicality from Giulio Doratiotto. Phoenix rising, pushing higher and higher up the field. Zambrano just comes in behind there on Nicky Hernandez. It's an understandable call from the referee. Phoenix need more of this energy. Danny Stone's got to be pleased with the response from his team after that penalty kick save from Rocco Rios Novo. The subs have had high energy. Cabral's been getting involved a little bit. You've seen Cuesho impact the game. Varela getting touches, some in the left half space, and Julio bringing a little bit more ball winning to the midfield, certainly more than a guy like Jose Andres Hernandez. Five, nine. Midfielder from Italy. Who's on the USL's young player to watch list coming into this season. You mentioned coming up in the Juventus system. This is a guy he's trained. He trained there with Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't know if you've heard of him before. Never. He's a decent player. Has he played in the USL Championship, Kim? Uh, not to my knowledge. How good can he be? It's a fair point. That one rolled through. Treor just got a little touch to get it back to his keeper. Rising in the offseason, went over coaching staffs on the front office members and had a big scouting trip over in Europe. Spent some time in Italy, spent some time with Juventus. Giulio Doratiotto, a big part of that trip, obviously now signing on the dotted line for Phoenix Rising. One of the most exciting players in the USL Championship. Still room to grow. Yes, but what a time to make your home debut. A little slip, and that one goes right back to Tambakis. Zico Bailey. Again, good defensive energy from Phoenix Rising. Egardo Rito getting forward, getting involved in the press. Zico Bailey with a heads-up play defensively. That's a huge part of his game. Mike. Is this one back? Julio touch back to Lawrence White. White, nice move to get around his man. Headed up Cabral. Julio, a nifty little play from the youngster. Doratioto is going to help rising control. Not necessarily the ball in the same way that Jose Andres Hernandez will, but the field, right? His physical presence allows Rising to win the ball more in that center circle, allowing them to push numbers higher up the field as well. We see Cuesho try to get the ball there in midfield off of that through ball. Mar Boy does a nice job shouldering off. Rito looking to try and get around his man, and he does at least for a moment if he keeps it in, and it looks like wasn't able to. See Edgardo Rito handing the ball off to Chris Gloucester. That outside back to outside back connection. Rito wants to get this ball back in play. 
as quickly as possible so we can try to pull off more slaloming runs like that. We saw one earlier on in the second half from Juan Carlos Azocar. We see one there from Edgardo Rito. Rising need a little bit of joy from their outside backs, especially with Panos, Panos Armanakis off the field. Responsibility is going to be on the outside backs and Fede Varela in that left half space to really be the engine that drives this team forward. Approaching 20 minutes to play. As Mar Boy coming together with Nicky Hernandez. Will letting the officials have an earful after that tackle. And then Hurst, nice little back heel. Getting it back. Gloucester crossed into the back post. And Akale was there, just needed one more step. Greg Hurst cues that entire sequence. Chris Gloucester with a nice ball to the back post. Akale throws himself at it. Hard to get that one on frame. Still New Mexico, showing that they have signs of life as well. They're pushing for a second. The football 2024 is here. You can live your dream and rep your team. Playing as your favorite USL championship club. E-football is free to play. Go ahead and download it now. Whistle, it'll be free kick. Greg Hurst has been sharp tonight in his return to the Valley of the Sun. Had six goals in his time here in the desert with Phoenix Rising in the regular season. He's been sharp tonight as well. Really helping conduct a lot of the attacking play for New Mexico United. Doing well, do, doing better killing than we've seen any number nine up against Pop Marboy. Yeah, Marboy certainly looks really, really sharp in the first couple of weekends of the season. And then, yeah, Hurst certainly showing a touch of class tonight to the young rookie. And it's an opportunity for Pop Marboy to rebound, both in the last 20 or so minutes of this game as he gives the ball away there, but also in training throughout this next week. There are going to be ups and downs. We've seen a lot of ups so far through the early days of 2024. There are going to be some downs, too. We've seen it tonight, giving up the penalty, having an issue inside the box in the first half. It's not been a token performance for Pop Marboy, and those are going to happen. The real question is, how do you respond? As Gloucester and White came together. And allow it to be a goal kick. Mike, that's going to be one that White took a little bit of a shove from Gloucester. He was actually the last one to touch it. Or the goal kick as Phoenix look to reset and try to build up. New Mexico is starting to apply a little more pressure now, it looks like, these last few minutes. And there's so much space on either side of Zico Bailey. Just out of screen, it really is a 4-1-5 sort of defensive shape for New Mexico United right now. Can Phoenix Rising find their half space, guys? Can they find Varela? Can they find Quesho? They've got Varela on the ball here. Yeah, Varela right foot crossed in, leaping up and knocking it down, but not fully out of danger just yet. Chipped ahead, New Mexico trying to alleviate a little bit of pressure. Maples intercepted in the midfield. Touchdown by Asokar. Asokar on his left foot. He turns, just keeps it in. Nifty play. Impressive from Asokar as he tries to chip it forward, but the one two can't combine with Varela. It's a nice look high on the left side for Phoenix. I'd like to see Cabral be a little more alive to that bouncing bow inside the 18. Pouncing on some of those are applying, uh, applying a little bit more pressure when the ball is bouncing inside the box. First sub. Reading for New Mexico. Harry Schwartz. You're on the side of the wall. You good? Their free kicks. Hey, hey. You good? Wait, hey, We're good. hearing some direction from Harry Schwartz there. Some dead ball organization from New Mexico United. As you close out games, Killian, that's one of the things you have to be most alive to. 
is organization on set pieces, especially on a windy evening like tonight. So Schwartz going to come off for Akale. Man with the assist tonight in the lone goal. A little wink from Akale as he comes off the field. Harry Swartz now stepping in. Akali with a great shift tonight. Getting involved in that goal sequence. Causing problems for the outside backs for Phoenix. Yeah, he's gonna be, this is gonna be a night that he certainly looks back and be very pleased with the performance that he put out. I love that little insight though we got from Harry Swartz. Thinking about how New Mexico United set up defensively as Phoenix are inevitably going to have a few more set pieces to close out tonight. Rito set one down, chested down, thought about a shot, waited, hesitate, left foot, and that one sails back towards Phoenix Sky Harbor. It's not a thing that fans typically spend a lot of time thinking about. It's not even a thing that if you talk to coaches and players around, not just the USL Championship, but anywhere around the game, set pieces aren't typically a, a thing that they really enjoy thinking about or training. We're starting to see a trend around the world where there is more time spent on that stuff because there's a growing recognition that, hey, as a sport, we've neglected this phase of play where, yeah, there are some parts you can plant. That's an incredibly rare thing in this sport. New Mexico United, credit to them and that communication from Swartz trying to stay organized in that phase of play. Traore, nice job shouldering off Nikki Hernandez. It's a good pressing angle from Hernandez, bending his run from right to left to force Rocco Rios Nova to keep the play on the right side for Phoenix Rising. Rocco wanted to switch play over to the left, but couldn't because of the angle of that press for New Mexico United's number 10. That's good defensive work. Harris, a bit of a poor touch. There's the goal scorer. Loses it for New Mexico United. Captain Zambrano lays off to Pop Marboy. Takes a beat or two from our boy to realize, hey, there's a lot of bodies here on our right side. Why not go and switch the point of attack? Those are the kind of things that you need to hit in rhythm as the season goes on. Not dilly-dallying on the ball, not wasting time in the last 15 minutes or so of this match. Like one touch from Rito. Middle one, two. Back to Zambrano. Try to get back with pass intercepted. Going right back up the middle. Nice cut, Zico Bailey, but shoved off. Nicely done by Marboy. It's a great tackle from Pop Marboy. Knowing that Zico Bailey has speed, so what do you do? Well, you don't give him a chance to take a big touch around you. You get into his frame, you force him off the ball, you use your strength so you don't give him the chance to beat you with quickness. That's great individual defending from the young pro. Nice interception. And right back at the feet. Hurst. Back heel Hernandez. There's Harris. Stops the ball on his right foot. You know, like to play it back out and wait for some more help. You see Quesho pointing to his left, trying to urge Julio to step forward to Mark Micheletto. Nothing comes of that sequence for New Mexico, but again, this is what Emil Quesho brings off the bench is that defensive intensity. He doesn't have the same class on the ball in the half space as Panos Armanakis, but he's able to help lead some of the defensive pressure for rising, something that they've really lacked through 75 minutes or so of this game. Hurst takes a couple steps towards Marboy, forces him to send it ahead. Quesho. Loses the ball at his feet. Now Marboy way up there, and that one. Pop Marboy came flying and almost looked like a linebacker on a football field, an American football field. And Marboy will leave the hands outstretched. We know Pop Marboy's got the strength. Again, that's a savvy bit of play from Marco Micheletto. Winding a few seconds off the clock, drawing a little contact, giving his chance to, a chance for his team to take a breath. I will say it looked a little more looked a little more aggressive at full speed than it did watch on the replay back. Remember the reigning USL champs, Phoenix Rising FC, play host to Colorado Springs on April 13th. And you can cheer them to victory at this beautiful stadium here in central Phoenix.
be there for every pass, every stop, every goal, and every win, starting at just $15 a seat. There's a place for everyone. Get your tickets at phxrisingfc.com. We are Phoenix Rising, Todos Rojos. Just a misplay on that attempted long ball. Goes out for a New Mexico United corner kick. New Mexico pushing numbers forward. Killian, that presents opportunities for every Phoenix Rising outfield player, but especially for Remy Cabral, a player that loves to sprint in behind. We saw Emil Cuesha miss him on a nice run that he made just a few minutes ago. He's going to be looking for these opportunities in transition to go and break the back line of New Mexico United. Carvana corner kick for New Mexico United. Fifth one of the night for the visitors. With this 1-0 lead, Hurst, quick little 1-2. Right-footed cross, up into the air, into the center of the box, chested down. Still in a dangerous location. And it will be a whistle, it looks like a foul on New Mexico United, so it will be free kick to Phoenix Rising. Bodies banging around inside of Phoenix Rising's 18. That's good defending on the bottom of your screen there from Julio Doratiotto on Nicky Hernandez, another physical player in the opposing midfield. And now Julio is down after taking some heavy contact. And he's writhing around in some pain. Micheletto coming in here. He just lands a little hard there from Doratiotto on his wrist. Clearly in some discomfort. Yeah, it looks like he's okay. Just gets the ball right back to his feet. This one sent long over the top. Still barely kept in, but not for long. It'll be a quick throw in taken by New Mexico United. And these are the moments to press. You see Remy Cabral getting engaged defensively there, pushing the ball out for a throw in. That's what Danny Stone wants to see to close out this match. If you're not finding chances in possession, and make no mistake, Rising have not done that tonight. Just five shots still in the evening, about a fifth of an expected goal. So far, if you're not creating chances in possession, why not try to create one in transition? And find a turnover. That's a slick bit of play from Julio. Like this, White Green all the way up, and White spun down from around the shoulder. And it will be a set-piece opportunity. It's good control from Lawrence Wyke, pushing forward into the attacking half. Zico Bailey brings him down. No reason to take a chance, but now a chance for Phoenix Rising on a set-piece. This will test some of that defensive coordination that we heard New Mexico United planning earlier. Schwartz relayed the details and the plan. See how it's executed is... We show the man standing, taking a few steps back. Left footed, he's got Zambrano just off to his left there at the edge of the screen. Let's see what Danny Stone has drawn up for this one. Jeremy Cabral being told where he can be. Rito lurking as well. Quasho, little chip, trying to get one over to Cabral and almost got it through, but Tambakis made the save and now he's down and I'm sure certainly gonna start to hear an earful from the Banditos down at that far end. The south end doesn't tend to mince words when it comes to opposing goalkeepers. No reason for Tambakis to hurry here whatsoever. It is a nice set piece design from Phoenix Rising. The clipped ball from left to right. The left side of New Mexico United's defense undermanned there. Opportunities for Phoenix to sort of clip that ball in. Find the run of Cabral. It's just a little over hit from Emil Cuesho, but good design. And you see Cabral. Just a little bump and Cambacus certainly taking his time. It's See him out and saying, I'm good. Okay, a little bit of time off this clock. 
As he should. As he should. A veteran goalkeeper for this New Mexico United team. 31 years old. Has spent time playing in Greece in the USL Championship certainly as well. Had a cup of coffee with Atlanta United. This is a guy that knows the game. He knows the rhythms of the game. He knows how to work the clock. It's a good skill for goalkeepers. An underrated one as they manage the last stretch of this match. Certainly is. You're also talking about a guy. He's second all time in career saves in the USL Championship. Trying to catch Evan Newton. And he'll certainly have an opportunity this year. Came into the night with 548 saves in USL Championship play. The back heel. There's Fede Varela. Swung out there wide left. Trying to put something together. Phoenix looking for the equalizer. Laid back off. Now swung. As Rito puts one up. It'll be off the head and it will be a corner. Cries there for a handball from Phoenix Rising. A nice switch of play from Renzo Zambrano over to the right side. The ball is then struck back into the box. You we'll see the replay here. Good clip. Rito. Not enough in that one for me. Gloucester in a, a mostly natural position there defending the cross. Yeah, certainly much different from Marboy where the arm kind of extended. He kind of collected everything back in towards the body. Gabby Torres, the Brazilian, going to come in, going more attacking as they bring off Mo Traore. So certainly Danny Stone looking to try and find at least one goal. This one sent in, back post, nowhere near, long shot off the right foot. Fresh into the match, Gabby Torres, we can't find that. Every reason if you're Danny Stone to push as many numbers forward in the attack as possible. Gabby Torres, the last attacking sub, really on the bench for Phoenix Rising tonight. We mentioned John Stenberg getting back from injury. He is in the game day squad. He will not make his season debut tonight, the Phoenix Rising captain. Mo Traore coming off the field. Get a little more attacking verve from Gabby Torres. Now a number of players, we'll see Juan Carlos Azucar, kind of able to occupy a free role. Where he's going to roam, he's going to look for space higher up the field, he's going to tuck inside more than even we've seen so far this evening. Phoenix Rising have to push. Remember your fans, you're going to watch the USL Championship on CBS Sports and the ESPN platforms all season long. Catch those live matches and expert analysis every day on the CBS Sports Golasso Network and ESPN+. Plus. Go to uslchampionship.com for the complete USL TV listings. Shove from behind. Quick reaction there from Pop Marboy to try to get the ball back into the play. It's brought back. Daniel Bruce will come in. The Englishman will come off for the striker. Greg Hurst, who had a very good match in his return to Phoenix. Yeah, he did in open play. Certainly that missed penalty kick will haunt Greg Hurst. Good speed on that kick. Just can't quite get it down. And Rocco Rios Novo, of course, making a great save earlier in this second half. But, man, between the boxes... So, so good from Greg Hurst tonight. Will that miss penalty kick come back to haunt New Mexico? We'll find out. Four minutes left, plus anything added on. We assume there's certainly going to be a little bit. Not my boy. Rito going to give it right back to White. Gabby Torres. Shifting the field. Let me Quay show. Quay show. Stop. Good turn. Gets it onto his right foot. Crossed in, but right into some yellow kits as Marboy slips. Has to slide in to keep that one away from a near breakaway opportunity. He 
see really just two center backs in the field now for Phoenix Rising. They are playing out of that pure back two in possession, pushing the wing backs higher. See Torres and Asokar and Rito getting involved in the game. Then Varela, he was the man who was trying to find the receiving end of that pass. And I think that pass right there, Varela just being one step behind, has kind of been the all-encompassing theme for the evening for Phoenix. It's been the story of the night. Killian, one defensive breakdown inside their own box. The wingbacks don't track back to influence the play. New Mexico United get on the board in the first half. Big save from Rocco Rios Novo. Some impactful defensive moments in this match, but really none. And the attack, 57% the ball right now for Phoenix Rising. But they've been outshot. They've been outcreated. They have not had the goods in possession tonight, which is a discouraging sign for this team and for manager Danny Stone after what really have been a couple of nice, solid performances to start the season at home. Yes, you lose 1-0 to Birmingham off of a deflected shot. Ball hits off of J.P. Skears and finds the back of Rocco Rios Novos' net. You can't be too upset at that goal, finding the back of your own net. You come out and you do create chances against Birmingham. You do create chances and get on the board against Oakland Roots. We've seen a bit of a step back in possession for Phoenix tonight. Still a few minutes left and certainly a couple opportunities if they can create them. Little hook there on Lawrence Wyke. Phoenix rising back on the ball, but again, just not sharp enough. And the collective press isn't there. New Mexico United can take a few seconds off the clock. Timbak is not in a rush. They have no incentive to go and play quickly out of the back. These are key moments from rising. Win the ball in midfield, Julio Dratioto will help you do that. But win the ball in the midfield and try to figure out a way to get Remy Cabral in possession, in behind New Mexico United's back four. Rito will move up. The goal scored out of Harris. Does a nice job getting right up in his face. Has to play back to Rio Snovo. Gabby Torres. Freshest legs on the pitch at everybody. For Phoenix. As White tries to sneak a pass through the middle. Can't get there. He was looking for Fede Varela. Now come back the other way. New Mexico is nicely done. Maiazzo Carr. Here's Torres. Played forward. Seven minutes of time added on. And now a foul and a free kick. Set piece opportunity for Phoenix just on the edge of the box. These are the moments that Rising are working for in possession. They're not getting the looks inside the box in open play. Go forward, look for a couple of fouls. Azokar does a nice job there bombing up the left side. Give your team a chance to work on something that you've worked on in training leading into this week. Give Varela a chance maybe with that right foot to bend a ball towards Timbacas' net and look for one of the big boys inside the box. It's quite showing Varela. Wind is, certainly looks like it's died down a tad at that far end. Just in general, it looks like it has. Varela will. Curling right foot back post. Not able to connect. Wyke was trying to sneak his way through there. It's a good ball from Fede Varela. Teasing towards the back post. With the two big-bodied center backs, Lawrence Wyke and Pop Marboy, are waiting. Good defending from New Mexico United. Eliminates the danger. Marboy thought he was taken down, but really it was Wyke trying to come and help pressure. Kind of just knocked the New Mexico defender into Marboy. It hasn't been his night, Pop Marboy. Not, not an altogether terrible performance, but certainly not his strongest of the young season so far. A good opportunity for him as you work towards training and, and even the last five and a half minutes of this game as Rising push for an equalizer. A good opportunity, a good test of character to figure out exactly how he's going to continue to push through both the ups and the downs as a professional. Mike hits that one around. As Bruce ran around that one a little bit. Like a bit fortunate. Sloppy with that header. Deep in Phoenix Rising territory, New Mexico take, can't take advantage. Here's Rito. 
We'll bring it up the near side. Trying to play ahead and now taken down. It will be a foul. On right back, Phoenix trying to keep things moving quickly. Quaisho plays it back in. Zambrano who had to kind of scurry to get back to that ball. And there's that switch. We haven't seen it nearly often enough tonight. Rising not moving the ball quickly from one side of the field to the other. That was a good sequence from Zambrano. And now a Carvana corner kick. Marboy and White, the two start to creep up. It's Fede Varela already that right foot. mix of man marking and zonal marking for New Mexico United. Look for a peeled run towards the back post. This one crossed in, punched out by Tambakis, and then cleared out towards the center circle. Rios Novo says, I'll come and help out. And then now we're going to have a whistle as Popmar Boy got tangled up with Nicky Hernandez as Hernandez kind of tumbled down to the ground. You can see it right here in the middle a little bit. Marboy yeah, just kind of ran right into him. It's a cheap shot from Pop Marboy. Hernandez on the ground. Didn't look at, like it's going to be anything too serious there for Nicky Hernandez. It's a careless mistake, though, from Pop Marboy. That's something, as a, as a young player, you have to know, especially in this situation, you do something like that. Hernandez, Hernandez is going to stay down and milk as much time out of this as he can. No doubt. No doubt about it. This is a learning opportunity for Pop Marboy. You know you're not going to get back the full time. At an extra time, you're going to see a minute, maybe more, ticked off the clock for the sequence. Obviously have to make sure Nicky Hernandez is okay, and it does look like he is getting ready to get back to his feet. But you know the referee is not going to put on the appropriate amount of stoppage time, and that's no slight to the referee. That's that's the sport, right? You don't see the full amount of stoppage time given in a game. Otherwise, we'd be looking at 20 or sometimes even more than that minutes of stoppage in any particular half, any particular game. We don't see that in soccer in this day and age. You're not going to get quite back what you lost there with that shot from Pop Marboy. So Hernandez makes his way off with the physio. Just waiting to get this one back underway. Hernandez waiting to be let back out on the pitch. So, Wyke, get it back going. As Phoenix will continue to press on, try to find some way to equalize and steal a point out of this match. That's so Carr. Here's Torres in the middle, Zambrano now. Wyke, touchdown, headed around. Zambrano does a nice job to keep possession. It's a bit of a body. Zambrano, a little pass into the box. Way show. That one deflected up and over the top of goal. It will be another corner, another opportunity in the closing moments. It's good. Careful defending from New Mexico United. Chris Gloucester, Zico Bailey. Careful not to put too much on the ball. That one was driven towards the back end, but it goes straight back out. Played quickly. Another one. Right foot knocked in. Tambakis comes up for it. And Tambakis now down. Much to the displeasure of the home crowd. Another whipped ball in from Fede Varela with that right foot from the left side. Tambakis does a good job getting to it in the box. More time ticking off the clock. So Carr tried to make a play on that one. Got the body right into the chest. Now on Harris and Renzo Zambrano getting a little into it. 
trying to keep the match going. The goal scorer, Dayon Harris. We mentioned at the top, these two teams, they don't like each other. The fan bases don't like each other. It's a great rivalry here in the Southwest. New Mexico took two of the three meetings a year ago. And now minutes away from potentially taking the full points in the first meeting of this season. Foster long throw in. Gabby Torres knows that he's got to go. Maybe one last look here for Phoenix. Torres riding the contact well from Swartz. Plays it quickly but turned over. Little one two. Plays it on Marboy. Turned over though. Rios Novo comes out and tips it up. Great save. Another one from Rocco Rios Novo. Zico Bailey puts this one high into the Phoenix Knight. Julio trying to coordinate. Send one more press forward. Shove out and there'll be a foul as Okar asks for a ball quickly. surprised killing if this wasn't one of the last actions over the night we're well past the seven minutes stoppage time not a great angle on the set piece rising choosing to take it short this one crossed in leaping up just off the head of Emmy Quasho and now Quasho right in the face and everybody starting to talk a little bit Cabral getting involved Julio Doratiotto still having some words. Varela tries to get this one. Another cross. It's just a little too close to Tembacus. Does a good job of claiming. Quisho gets involved. That right there is what rivalries are all about. And they're still drawn a little bit right at the edge of the 18. Julio Dorotioto, this might be his first appearance in a Phoenix Rising kit, but he's certainly making himself well known. Welcome to the USL Championship. Just 19 years old. A good opportunity against a clean, sharp New Mexico United side tonight to get your professional debut. And that even if the result doesn't go Rising's way, that Julio Dorotioto will remember for a long, long time. Hernandez suffered from some cramps here at the end of the night. He slowly makes his way off. Well past 10 plus minutes now. They still go forward and now the substitution will see more will come on. And now everybody, everybody getting into it. We didn't think it was a rivalry coming to this one. It certainly is now. Is White right in the middle of it? Trying to hold him back. The bench is getting involved. It's right there in front of that Phoenix Rising dugout. White visibly upset. That substitution came and the fourth official was right there in the middle of it and I'm sure is there's a booking. Qua so yeah, Quasho came in trying to get Hernandez off. The fourth came out. You have the New Mexico United trainer right there in the middle of it. You have Danny Stone 
assistant coach Darnell King, of course, a former Phoenix Rising player, trying to clear the area, trying to push Rising players out of that scrum. Certainly no love lost, Killian, between these two teams. Wall well, trying to sneak a boot up there. Dora Tioto still talking, making his presence felt here in America. Long ball sent in, waiting arms, Tambakis, and there it is. The final whistle and a 1-0 victory for New Mexico United. And it's still a few words and handshakes from the two coaches. A good bounce back victory in three points for New Mexico United. Thanks to the 16th minute goal off the foot of Deion Harris. A long night for all involved. And a victory from the visitors here in Phoenix. A good performance killing tonight from New Mexico United. Clinical when they needed to be inside the box. That goal from Deion Harris, very, very well struck. Luquele Akale constantly involved on the wing for Eric Quill's side. Not a night to remember if you're Phoenix Rising. A difficult evening for Pop Marboy, a young player still trying to find his footing at the professional level. Good to see the debut of Giulio Doratiotto in midfield. That is an encouragement for this Rising squad. And another sharp performance from Rocco Rios Novo in net. Those are all potential difference makers as the season goes on. But tonight, the missing piece really was that attacking play, the lack of coordination and cohesion in the attacking half of the field. Yeah, certainly could have been a lot more than just a 1-0 victory for New Mexico United, if not for that man, Rocco Rios Novo. We're going to take one more break. 1-0 victory from New Mexico United. We'll wrap things up here in Phoenix on the other side. Your health shouldn't depend on where you live, which language you speak, or the size of your paycheck. Everyone deserves access to high quality care for a healthy life. At Equality Health, we partner with primary care providers to break down barriers to care and build healthy communities. Better health for all, the real game winning goal. Equality Health is the season presenting sponsor of the Phoenix Rising and proud sponsor of the Rising Community Soccer Clinics. Well, it's finally happening. The robots, they're coming. Hi, Amory. Hmm, maybe that's a good thing. She said what? She said what? I was ready like a full 20 minutes before you. What are you talking about? <laughs> it drives better than you do, babe. It does. <laughs> Bye, robot. Billy, I need help with the clicker. Yeah, wait, one second, Grandma. This guy's gonna buy my car. Billy, you still there? I'm okay, deal, right? you need Carvana. What's your plate number? Boss M O V. Vehicle features. No accidents, right? No. Good. Generating offer. Carvana can pick it up tomorrow. That's an amazing offer. But do you still need help with the clicker? I'll ask your sister. Sell your car the easy way with Carvana. Welcome back in. There is your final at full time. 1-0 New Mexico United over Phoenix Rising FC. A difficult defeat for the defending champions. Good bounce back victory collecting three points for New Mexico United after that 4-0 loss last weekend in Charleston. Some of the highlights from the match. The wind was a big factor of it. Alex Tambakis certainly had to deal with that. Couple opportunities early in this match for Phoenix just couldn't capitalize at all. No, and even you see that shot from Erickson Gallardo. Not a bad effort with his right foot from that left half space, but not nearly close enough to goal. Speaking of goal, you get a great strike here from Deion Harris crashing just behind Lawrence Wyke. Edgardo Rito nowhere to be found at the back post. Left Phoenix rising undermanned inside the 18. Yeah, the little number one. It's the one and only goal scored on the night. 
Good opportunity from Hurst. Rocco Rios Novo was big. This could have been easily a two, potentially three nil. A huge penalty save on Hurst. Gave Phoenix some life, but just couldn't do anything with it. No, and we saw some of that energy carried forward when the second half subs came on. A bunch of changes made by Danny Stone all at once. Emil Cuesho coming on the field. You brought energy and, and got Phoenix involved in some scraps as well. You see here, Killian, just not quite enough danger in the attacking half. Just six shots to New Mexico United's 13. The lowest passing accuracy in the opposing half of the season so far for Phoenix Rising tonight. The lowest passing accuracy in terms of passes ending in the final third. And just not a lot of balls coming into the box. They were really able to be brought down by Formella or later Remy Cabral. Yeah, lots of talk. You see all those yellow cards given out. Certainly going to make for the return trip to New Mexico an exciting one to keep an eye on later on this season. As here's a look at what's upcoming for Phoenix Rising. They head out of town. Go to Tulsa, Oklahoma next week at FC Tulsa and then return right back. Well, a couple back-to-back -back. Colorado Springs and Pittsburgh. I'll have those ones here for you before they hit the road again. A long trip out to Rhode Island. FC before getting into May. It's wild, Joe. We're already talking about May. March just ended. Come <laughs> it's coming quick. Killian, a couple of difficult games there to close out that five-game stretch. Going on the road, you take on a really, really sharp Sacramento Republic team. Rising, some big games coming up in the next three. One away, two at home to pick up some much-needed points. Yeah, certainly trying to defend the title. Well, you see high fives for the Banditos from their hometown club as Phoenix Rising unable to pull out a result here tonight. For my partner Joe Lowry, Kilman McClatchy here, a big thanks to our entire crew here tonight. It was a windy one in Phoenix and New Mexico United and Deion Harris come away with a big 1-0 victory and take away the three points. I want to thank you for joining us this evening, wherever you may be. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be safe and we'll join you. Have you back here in the next couple weeks.